This is Regina. She's from Sanger, California. And she says, I am 69 years old, a health coach, and very healthy. I address health issues with nutrition and supplements for many years now. I have had heart palpitations when stressed. However, nothing critical shows up on heart exams. I know I have hormone issues based on Dutch test results and symptoms. At my age, can I benefit from bioidentical hormone therapy? She's 69. Couple questions in there. Yeah. Um, number one, heart palpitations. This is the very best thing about your heart palpitations is you went to a physician and they can't find anything. And yeah. that's what you want when you go to a doctor or a nurse practitioner. You want them to be scratching their head. You say, you know, I really don't know what's going on because I'm sure they did some basic tests because they are excellent. And I mean excellent at finding stuff when it's not good. But uh, when they, so when they say, I can't find anything and I did these tests on you, that's what you want to hear from them. You say, thank you so much. I'm so glad you don't know what's going on. I'm just kidding, <laughs> being facetious. <laughs> and then heart palpitations as a result of insufficient hormones is a very common thing. Hmm. There is, it's, it's something that emergency room doctors don't necessarily think of, but a woman can show up, a relative of ours, she showed up in an emergency room with heart palpitations and chest pain, no less, had a cardiac angiogram performed on her. That's quite an intense procedure. And they found nothing. Well, that's great. But they were wondering whether she was having a heart attack, and so was she. That's why she went to the emergency room. Yeah. But her story is replicated all over the, the place. And how in the world can that happen? Well, when your body is alarmed and it doesn't have enough estrogen, the only hormones it can throw at the biological stress response is its usuals which is adrenaline and cortisol, but if it doesn't have estrogen and testosterone, which it does not have at the age of 69, the only thing it can throw at it is more adrenaline. And adrenaline is enough to give you heart palpitations. Absolutely, if I injected adrenaline into you or into me, we'd get heart palpitations. <laughs> well, when someone's own adrenal gland injects a sufficient amount of... So the good news is the heart palpitations could represent nothing other than ovarian hormone deficiency. Happens all the time. Yeah. And 69, um, a woman's, from my perspective, a woman should be treated every single minute she's on Earth until she leaves Earth. From the time her hormones start to diminish and, uh, and until the time, until the very end. Because you've said many times, it starts earlier than what's traditionally known as menopause. That's right. And just keeps on freight training down and down and down. And the need doesn't go down, just the levels of hormones do. The need increases. Yeah. As the hormones go down, the need increases. Yeah. And what are we talking about here? The long-term stuff, the bones, the muscles, the mood, the sleep, uh, and on and on and on, as we uh, explained in, in great detail in the training program and also in the um, in, in our book, Happy Healthy Hormones. And 69, nothing's ever too late. The, I started hormone treating uh, elderly women on my mother-in-law when she was in her late 80s and my mother when she was in her late 80s to significant benefit for both of them. In fact, we have a special formulation for elderly women. Not 69, I would not call an elderly woman. From my perspective, it's a younger woman. <laughs> 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 but. Um, Yes, I would definitely get these hormones. What do they affect that's really going to matter to you 20 years from now? Mood, arteries, cognition, muscles, bones, vagina, bladder. It's the difference between wearing Depends, these adult diapers, Heart. or not. Heart. Heart, coronary arteries. These hormones are very crucial for natural function. So whatever age you figure it out, my best recommendation is to get on bioidentical hormone replacement. Now, if you have a very strong intuition that you don't want to do that, I never suggest to a woman that she override her own personal will. What I do suggest is, well, investigate it further. Read our book. Read other books. Learn about it. Because if you have a question about it, a lot of times your questions will be answered by learning more about the subject. And there's wonderful information about there that you can learn. Again, our book. And then if at the end of whatever research you've done on it for yourself, this is written for lay people, it's not written for, we have other training programs for professionals. 
If you arrive at the conclusion of, I don't want to do that, respect it. Or if you arrive at the conclusion of, hmm, I think I do, well, we can help you connect up with someone. The test that you mentioned is any test, that would be a blood test, the test that you mentioned, saliva test, 24-hour urine hormone test at the age of 69 is going to show you to be low in hormones, and that's very accurate. The reason I would like to say that once you're being treated with hormones, there's no test that I would recommend other than the 24-hour urine hormone test. Now, we, we've, ta we've taken this up before as a question, but I want to emphasize that. Any and every test that tests hormones is going to show you low at 69 if you're not taking hormones. Once you start taking hormones, there's only one test that's going to give you what you really need to assess how much of those hormones are making into my body, what levels are they at, and are they hitting in the right zone. Not too much, not too little, but actually in the target, in the absolute best zone. And I've watched you teach a lot of doctors about this. And for reasons that I can totally understand, there's sometimes resistance to it. For one thing, change. Doctors have learned a method and it's been something they've used. And for another, this doesn't, this isn't, this is the most awkward of them. Although you've said many times, what the heck, it's not that bad. But the reason why the I brought it up, you buy test. the 24 hour urine home test. But the reason that I brought it up is that who better to understand the logic than a medical doctor? And what have I heard many, many, many times over? Is once you describe to them the logic behind why it's the only one, the, the, the light bulbs go off. They get it. They get it. They get it. It just makes and sense. And it's I didn't get science. it until I ran my first hormone test. A friend of mine had told me, hey, listen, you want to understand what's going on in a woman's body when you're treating her with hormones, while you're treating her with hormones? Yeah. Do the 24-hour urine hormone test. And when I first saw the report and got help interpreting it, I went, that's why my friend recommended this, because it's fantastic. And there's no orthopedic surgeon when a, when a patient has a suspected fracture in their wrist, for example, that's going to try and treat that without seeing an x-ray. And the orthopedic surgeon knows it, and they're going to tell the patient, we need an x-ray. Well, when any uh, hormone doctor really understands the subject and really knows what they're doing, they're going to say to the patient, and we're going to do the 24-hour urine hormone test, and the patient isn't going to wince, because the doctor themselves, or the nurse practitioner herself, or themselves, they know what they need, the patient isn't going to resist them. It's when they don't know about the importance of and the, and the proper way to test that they get a little timid around asking for a 24-hour urine hormone test and the patient feels the timidity and says, do I really need to do it? Moral of the story is once a, someone who wants to be expert in treating women in menopause with hormones realizes the tools they need, which includes the 24-hour urine hormone test, to properly evaluate a woman while you're treating her, they get it in their backbone and they say it. And now we're going to do the 24-hour urine hormone test. And the patient never winces. And uh, in all the 25 years that I've been treating women in menopause and asking for that test, I never get pushback because I know it's needed. And so my women patients trust me, and they do it. So I, I have heard that there is this thing called resistance out there, but I wanted to elaborate a little bit on where that resistance comes from yeah. and how it's unfounded. Yeah. And uh, you want to practice good medicine in treating women with uh, hormones? Your, what your best friend is going to be the 24-hour urine hormone test. You'll see what I mean when you do it. Well, great. It's been a great week. We covered as many questions as we've ever covered, ever. <laughs> 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 and we will be back here next Thursday at 3 for yet another one of these live answering of your questions. So feel free to write them in. We really love to answer as many as we can get to.